So welcome to all of you to this session called Application Portfolio Management for the Digital Natives. First, uh, first I have a little thing which I have promised to say, and that is that uh, the ones attending the party tonight uh, at the uh, Microsoft party, you have to remember your, this uh, dog tag that you were given, this light tag. Uh, it is not possible to enter without having that uh, with you. So with those words, I'm going to give you a little bit of Roundup on the uh, assumption and the expectation from your side. Uh, this session is a very technical session. It's going to be very, very demo driven. Um, we are hoping that you have a familiarity with configuration management in 2007 or 2012. Uh, we're going to do a lot of demoing, so we will try to not talk so much over the slides. Uh, so we're hoping that you can also read so that you are, can actually also see the what, what we're writing up here so we can hurry over and, and actually see some of the things that we're doing. So a little bit of introduction about Andreas and I. Andreas and I both uh, come from, uh, from the deployment world, so we've been working with deployment basically all the way down back to Windows 95, sitting and working with scripted, win install, kickstart, every, all these kind of things. And then we've basically been working all the way up uh, through the different operating systems um, that, that has been out. So the world that we're also coming from is a, a world where we have been having to deal with a very, very drastic increase in, uh, in the amount of packaging that we were doing. We, we have an application packaging factory where we basically from 2006 went from 3,500 apps delivered in a year to now close to around seven, uh, 17,000, which of course really gives, so just to give you an understanding, why is it that we have actually made these uh, tools and integrations um, that, that we have done? It's really because we have actually dealt with, with all the pain ourselves. So the problem really about managing applications in, uh, in your corporate environment, well, it is a really, it says here, pain in the uh, something. We know that consumerization is real. We know that we have to be able to go fast to market and bring out the applications from the application owner and all the way out to, to where it gets deployed out in the machines. We know we need to measure it. All these kind of things are just really, really pressuring IT organizations. We also know that uh, Gartner tells us that 60% of organizations are going to uh, deploy app stores. I don't know how many here uh, think that they're going to deploy an app store within the next couple of years. See a lot of hands up. Good stuff. So how do we want to do it? Well, we don't want to do it in this way. We don't want to, to give the uh, end users the experience of having to sit out and fill a huge amount of boxes and formulas and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We, we really want to give like a very good end user experience. And this is also where we can see the market is driving very much towards easing the pain of the business. And IT has to be kind of an invisible thing behind. We shouldn't uh, annoy uh, end users. So <clears throat> what we are going to show you is actually our three different products, application, uh, application manager, accelerator, and our compliance manager and cloud-based solution built on, uh, on Azure, which we have actually done in order to cover this entire uh, life cycle of, of applications. So on the first thing, let's see what, what we're actually talking about. Well, we're talking about, we're talking about the three different uh, applications which we actually do, where we have the accelerator which take care of all the re uh, requests and requirements. We have the compliance manager taking care of all the governance, measuring, etc. We have the uh, SRS solution. We have application manager also working with everything about how we actually get the application from the application owner and all the way out to, uh, to the end user. So. The demo that we're going to do now is actually to uh, show you a little bit about uh, the Config uh, Manager 2012 application, how we uh, do administration of the applications, how we deal with the acceptance of, uh, of end users, and how we actually set the requirements, how we capture all these uh, requirements in. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to go ahead and soon switch over to the demo. But first, I'd like to explain that Normally, in an application that you actually, when you take an application through the life cycle, you have an enormous amount of people involved in the process. So in order to try to make the demo slightly more understandable, with, instead of switching between a lot of actual consoles, we're going to do everything from a one single console. We'll still involve a lot of people, but I'd, I'd like to give a, a bit of a structure. So 
This is the last session that we kind of have today before the closing party, so we're going to try to keep things as simple as we can. So, so what is it that we're actually going to show? So if we look at the next slide. Yeah, what we're actually going to show here is how we get the application owner to request an application. So it's not only about like calling up the service desk, I need an application. We would like to give the power to the uh, application owner to already request it, and then we set up all the processes around how to handle the application afterwards. So. Hit it. So if we switch over here, um, what we're looking at here is our um, end user portal accelerator. So I'm as a, a user can then go in and request different action actions that I want IT to actually handle. So if I go in and select that I want to actually request access to a new uh, software package. So we see the screen. We can see that we, it's, it's very sim it's simplified. We can probably simplify it even further if we actually want to. So the first of type is basically to provide what kind of software is this actually. So we have a drop down that allows us to take a, the type, which is a template that you set up in Accelerator, will give you access and fill in more information in the, in the actual flow. So I'm going to say that this is a highly important application. Oops. So and what I'd like to cover as well is that everything that we're running today is a beta software, so to kind of keep me on my toes. So if I go in here again and do request new software. So we're going to keep it as a business application this time, and uh, we're going to type in the name. So you can see here that we only have a name for the application. We don't have a vendor field, manufacturer, et cetera, et cetera. We only have one simple field to put in the, na the actual name. So in this request, we're going to request some music application to get access to Spotify. So the version, maybe the end user thinks maybe maybe 1.0. They could leave it blank because it's really up to IT to know the exact version number and the manufacturers and provide that kind of details. So I give you give it a short description, and then we have a tick box here to say that. The end user can then allow IT to come back to them and ask questions. So what? What, is it a specific version of Spotify? Do you know anything? Or the user can say, I don't know anything about this, so you guys in IT will have to figure this out for me. So before I do that, though, I'm going to go back to this, the screen. And you see here the target user. So in Accelerator, we have the ability to actually request access to software for other people. So I'm logged on as the administrator, but I know that it's not actually me that's going to use this application. The request is actually coming from one of my colleagues. So I'm going to type his name in, search, and basically the request is then going to go in under his name. So we have the summary screen, and we're going to go ahead and actually request that application. So what then happens is that this will start a workflow in the back end. And we know that the John Doe's manager has to approve this. So I'm going to log in as Sarah Marshall here, which is John Doe's manager. And you can see here in the bottom that I'm signed in as Sarah. So Sarah, of course, will get an email notification, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going to go ahead and we go down to manage Sarah's actual approvals. So the accelerated, uh, the accelerated website is not only to do requests. That's also where all of the IT do all of their approvals and denies user access to their software or any, anything that's IT related. So we can see here that we have a new software request. We can see that the target user is actually for John Doe. And basically, we're waiting for Sarah Marshall's approval. So this is OK for Sarah. So she says OK. But that means that Sarah is fine with actually approving this application. But before we introduce it into the environment, we want to give the system approver who basically runs the entire application portfolio to have his say if this application should be included or not. So we're going to go back to the main page and sign in as Ed Aldrich. And he's the guy that runs the applications globally. So with logged in as Ed, we'll then go to manage again we can see that he will have an actual approval to do. So you can see a little status there that Sarah has actually approved it. 
So it's basically you only then left up to add to say that, yeah, this is something that we actually need. So as you can see here, the actual notification has instantly been said that uh, the workflow has gone through and you can open up and see that the basically the order has been requested and everybody that is involved within the actual workflow will get notification that this application has been approved. So that was the simple bit. So if we go back to the slides here again and jump forward a little bit. Yeah, so the next thing we're gonna look at is now, now the, the uh, application owner, he has actually requested this application. So now we actually want to get the information about how should we actually install this application. Yeah. So it, this kind of, when we've done the initial request then, we will then go into how do we find out what exactly, which version is it that we need to package Spotify? And how, I mean, is there any prereqs pre for Spotify? The end user is not going to know, so what we'll have to do is that we'll have to assign this application to an actual administrative type user that can take decisions and look into, go to maybe to the website, find out some more information. Yeah. So we, we have, we've seen in the past that, you know, as, as IT, we were asking end users to sit and make a lot of Word documents and put in screenshots and copy in screenshots and fill out a lot of uh, different things. So we, we really went to the real pain of those end users and just look at how is it you want us to, uh, want to provide this information uh, to us. Do you really want to sit and make all these screenshots? And the answer was very clear, no. Yeah. So as you probably know, I mean, sending emails backwards and forwards with Word documents that you may be stored in some local repository is not the way to go. So what we've done is we've actually automated this. So this is what I'm going to show you. So. If we then switch the view and uh, look at Application Manager. So Application Manager is kind of our back-end solution for managing for IT and the application owners to work with every single item that they have. So it's our DSL library to keep all of the actual applications in one place. So if I go to Manage Applications here, we should see that we have an end user request for Spotify. So we can open up this request and see that we have some general information that has come in. The description field has been filled out by Accelerator because it knows that it's an end user that's actually requested this. And it's also filled in that who is the user, user's manager that has approved this application. We also can track that the application owner, Ed Aldridge, has also approved this. So it's probably a, a pretty good order and the business really wants this application. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, we know that the, all of our desktops in the entire end company, oh, they only run Windows 7 on the CX64. So we're basically going to select that that's going to be our OS platform for this application. And the other thing, is that that's kind of really all the information we need at the moment. Because we're gonna, we know that we have one guy, he's really, actually really good at music. So he has iTunes and all the other applications. So he must know a lot about this. So we're going to schedule him to decide which version of Spotify we're going to use. So the way we do that is that, I mean, we, of course, we could fill out even more, more information. If it's, are we going to replace an existing application with this new application, et cetera? And as you saw in the previous slide, we can add application owners and other contacts that will be used during the process. But in order to simplify things, I'm just going to go ahead and say, we want to schedule a remote discovery of this application. So what we've done is that we've integrated with a, a bunch of um, hypervisors so that the end users, we're going to book a virtual machine and send that out to the end user or the application owner for them to go in and actually know, give us more information about this request. So with the integration, I mean, we can have multiple different OS. OS so we can have different sessions for each operating system if it's different media for the application. So I'm going to assign an application expert here. And I'm going to take myself. And then what we do is we're going to find the available date for the application owner. And where do we actually find that information? You know, in this calendar, basically. So what we've done is that we actually go directly to Exchange find out when does this guy have time to give us more input about the application. 
So about on the 20th, which on the Monday at 2, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and schedule that. And you can see that it's blinked up really, really quickly. So what basically happened is the request has now gone in to his actual calendar. So if we go to the 20th, we can see that we actually have the discoveries have been created in his calendar. So he knows that he can open this up when it comes and go directly to that virtual machine to give us more input about the application. So what does that actually look like? So if I scroll down, so basically here's the application. Normally you would run this as in a completely different environment, but I'm going to go ahead and run it from our, the actual desktop here. So we have a tool called AppDisco, which is basically a very simple application designed only to grab information about applications. And the best way that we saw this, rather than having all of these Word documents, is basically to do two sim simple things. One of them is drag and drop. So we basically drag the applications in there. And uh, the next thing, what we do, is to basically allow the end user to simply guide us through how they should install this application. So in this case, it was a very, very simple actual installation. So what we're going to do is just close the window and say, yeah, we're pretty much done here. So what happened? Oops. So I hope it worked. If we go back to refresh our app application, we should see that we have a the files that the end user actually added up, they, oops, not attached. So let me go ahead and go do this once more. So we start the discovery. So run it one more. We can see select our end user request. Take a different, take, a, take the actual MSI, drag it on there, start the discovery. Basically, we've already done this, so we could close the windows and say, yeah. So it worked this time. So if we go back to uh, the actual package portal, we can see if we update this, go in for the request, go to the files. We can then see that all of the media files have now been uploaded to the portal. But the really nice thing is that the documentation it's kind of already been done. So we created an, an actually a screen capture of the user doing the, what he did. So the packager will then be able to see exactly what was made in that session. So exactly which radio buttons in the application installation should you press, what are the server names that you need to be aware of, et cetera. So that's really how we've automated the entire process of getting more information about the application. Yeah, so basically, no more sitting and, and making screenshots and sitting and uploading things to different folders or having some different places, finding where you need to do it or emailing uh, files to, to service desk. So the next thing we want to, um, to look on at is actually how we then document the applications. Now we have gotten, we have sent off the, uh, the package to the uh, application packager, but we also want to actually know how, how do we document applications into a system where we can avoid sitting and having to do Word documents again. No one really wants to sit and update in Word documents, and also it's not very flexible in terms of uh, how you can actually dynamically look up, search in. So we decided to move all the documentation over on a database structure instead, based on a SQL uh, database. And again, using the, uh, the same platform that we are having in, uh, in Application Manager. Yeah. So we switch back to our demo session again. So what I've done is I've just clicked the link here. The original files for this media has already been uploaded. So I'm going to easily click here, get the access to the media. So in this session, I'm in the actual packager that is going to work with this application in the process of making sure that we can publish it into Configuration Manager, et cetera. So I'm going to take my pretend that I'm packaging this. I'm going to copy it into the actual completed files, which is basically the end product, the MSI. So I'm going to 
open that up and do a little bit of copy and paste. Do a little bit of refresh. I thought. Seems like we have the demo devil in the room today. So let me go ahead and open up this way. And then we have our completed file. Let's see if this works better. No luck there. I guess we did too many apps down in the, uh, at the booth, <laughs> it seems. So, but what I could show you, it's meanwhile, I think the application copying is going on somewhere in the background. So meanwhile, we wait for that. I'm going to launch my uh, app doc tool, which is basically, this is an executable that's designed to document the MSIs. So if I go in to look at my completed files, no, nothing yet, but I have an application lying here. So I'm basically copy my shortcut or path to it. So I open up my Spotify. It's worth then reading all of the variables that is in that application. Because we don't want to document and just creating additional fields that provides the same information that we actually already know about that are in the MSI. So instead, we open up the MSI programmatically we show you exactly which files that are in the MSI, and the default option is not to, um, to document everything, because all of the MSIs, you don't want to know every, about every single file that you have. But there might be a few files that are like very important for you, so you can choose to actually add those. Same with any merge modules that we know, that any specific ones that we need to include. Any registry entries we can track, that basically this is only one, so yeah, we're going to help go ahead and add that to the documentation as well. And the same with custom actions. If we know that we have custom actions that's going to go in and actually do some damage to our systems, we can choose that with those we actually want to document. And then we also have the public properties that we can actually change and track those in the system as well. So we believe that using public properties are the best way of actually s storing information. So instead of having hard-coded actual properties within the each MSI, we want to keep them as public properties that we can change on the fly. And we have the ability to track that to basically say if there was something, a, one of these uh, variables that would be able to track is saying that, yeah, this is actually a serial number. And then you can, in, in Application Manager, pull reports on every single serial number that you know is being used to install applications. So it's really a, and we're trying to automate as much as we can in order to get these volumes of applications that we do. Because nobody has time to open up a Word document, type it in, and save that somewhere and send it off to someone else. I would say one of the things that, that we also really had issues with uh, a, a lot of time in deployment projects was that deployment projects are quite big very often. So people tend to change things. So suddenly there's a new SQL server. So there might have been 300 apps packaged, which was actually accessing that SQL server. Uh, so now suddenly the SQL manager decides to give it a new name and so in a completely different place. Uh, and how, how do we go ahead? And should we, do we have to go then and find out and search in all those applications? And like, how, how do we actually change this? So by, by putting it in here, we can actually change it for all those 400 applications or 300 applications with a snap. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and associate all of this information that we have with our Spotify application. So if I can find it in the list here. It's probably going to see that this should be number 48 because it has a higher ID. And then we go ahead and finish that. So we then update the application manager database with all of these properties. So what does that actually look like? If we go back to application manager and go under the documentation, we'll be able to see that the exact information that we had earlier 
has now been published up. And it's available both for reporting, you can see the command lines in here, we can see all the properties that we actually choose to document as well and what they actually mean. So that's really how we work with the documentation bit. So cool. Okay, so now we have um, now we have a package. We got it from the uh, application owner. We got the documentation about how this should be made. We actually packaged it. We documented it into the system. So now we want to actually go ahead and also do some kind of automation on how we test the application, how we run it through in uh, in without having to have end users necessarily who have to come and meet us to test the application. So what we actually did here was we took the entire automation of uh, of testing the application when we got it back. So we're actually running it through the SCCM uh, 2012 or 2007 and automatically booking virtual machines during the evening. Then we are actually pushing out the applications and installing them with all the dependencies and everything which is required. And then we are also uninstalling it, and then we are doing another thing, which is we are reverting the machine and then pushing and, and booking the machine so it is ready for the end user test, so the real life test. In this way, we also avoid this kind of thing where we have an, an end user uh, or an application owner who has to sit and, and test an application, which then later on will, will uh, fail a test deployment. And then we have to get him to test again and again and again. Yeah. So I'm going to show you how that actually works on the back end here. So finally, my file actually did copy up. It just, I didn't know that it was so big, so it was 27 meg that it had to copy. So maybe that's why it took a little time. So you can see that finally now the file is completed. So this is the actual MSI that we want to tell Config Manager to use to do the deployment. So if we go back to Application Manager, we can then see that we want to move this application forward so we've, gone, we've done the kind of the, done the packaging bit already so we basically submit that as an internal step yeah and then it's in the packaging bit we can kind of skip this because it's already done as an MSI so we move it to the deployment phase and then we read out since we have all of the information about the application already there's no need to type anything especially if, and we want to automate as much as possible for the SCCM guys so what we're going to go ahead, we're going to create a new SCCM 2012. So automatically putting the application in the Config Manager with the new application model. That will create the de deployment types with the install command lines and et cetera. So we're going to see how simple that is. I'm also going to go ahead and actually choose to create a deploy collection at this moment. So I'm going to drag my little test collection here and basically press the import button. So meanwhile that loads, we can go over and actually launch the config manager console. So meanwhile we wait for that to load, I'd like to talk a little bit about what we've done going forward and also debate how we've been doing this in the past. In 2007 it was the way that we did dependencies for applications, etc was that we created a task sequence, put all the dependencies in that task sequence and the application itself, and use that as our template for the UAT in order to get the application in. So we were looking at the new application model and some of the limitations there that we see, which is great to get your guys' feedback on, is will it be enough? Because the application dependencies that you can have in 2012 can only be dependencies on other applications. So if you have a dependency for a package program type instead, you can actually track that within your configuration manager database. So we have kind of have the crossroads of should we go with the actual task sequence route, which we did before, or should we go with just native application deployment dependencies? But I think we're probably going to have to end up doing both because we don't think that the only the application de or dependencies will be enough. But let's see what we actually created here. So if I go in under application management, you can then see that we have our Spotify application. So I'm going to double click and get that up. So basically, the deployment type has been created. We created in one for the MSI. Of course, you could then be able to actually create app V deployment types, et cetera, et cetera, that we've been covered in all of the other sessions. If we edit our deployment type. 
we can see that the content source has been set to the URL that I've had a problem to get my MSI into. But, so it knows it's, that's the source that it should use. We created the command line for installing the application and as well as the uninstallation. So we also have added a detection method for this application. So we know that if we find this actual grid on the box, we know that this application has been installed. So, and this is the case, this is the actual uh, application that we then use going forward when we actually do the user and acceptance testing. Yeah. So in the uh, automated user and acceptance step, we, we talked about like we are importing the application, so we have the import capability built into our application manager. So we really want to automate all these kind of things with the testing steps and how we manage the virtual machines and that we actually test and put the software in there before the end user uh, gets into having to test it. Yeah. So I can go ahead and show yeah. what that looks like, or do you want to cover something else? Oh. I think we want to see the demos. So we now have every single, so if I actually reload this, and go in for my Spotify application, we can then track the deployment results. We can see that we've had the deployment types created, that we've deployed this to an actual collection on the collection ID. And we have the ability to delete those objects if they were not good and re redo it again and again. So but we're going to go ahead with that move the package to the UAT phase, which is our user and acceptance testing. So what we did earlier with the actual application in discovery, we're doing the same process for actual user acceptance testing. So we're preparing a virtual machine. And do you want to talk a little bit about, meanwhile, I'll fill this out about the booking of the virtual machine? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what we wanted, wanted really to do was to match the timings of booking the virtual machine. So we actually take control over a number of resources. We say that these are our uh, virtual machines that we can start up and that we can uh, control. We then map that to the, uh, to the application owner's calendar so that we make sure that when he needs to test it and when he is booked for, for his test, then the software is automatically already prepared and, and deployed to that machine. So when he just goes into the machine, he, the only thing he needs to do is actually just start up the application, test it, make sure that it works and that it, it functions. He doesn't have to spend any time on, on sitting and thinking about, oh, I have to wait for some guy from IT. He has to prepare a machine. Then I have to come to his office. And then I have to sit down there and test it. And I have to fill out some papers and sign something off that, that I accept that this will work when it's deployed out. Yeah. Cool. So normally, in, in, in if this was in a real world scenario, you would probably have quite a lot of different tests. Because you want to test that it works on your tablet machine. You want to test that it works on your x86 Windows XP builds or your 64 with Windows 7 builds. So you'd have a lot of lists. So keeping track of all of that and actually doing the scheduling is quite a big task if you need to do it manually. So I'm going to get it scheduled that. And what we'll see as well, again, we'll get the, with the exchange integration, we automatically move the application into the calendar. And we also actually delete the entry in the inbox because we, wanna, we don't want to spam the people doing these tests with creating a huge inbox for them. So we actually move the item out of the, we basically accept it for them. And if they want to change it, they have the ability to do so. So I think I put this one for 24th, I think. But I mean, normally they would just see it in the calendar, go in, open up, and actually run that RDP file. That's what they would do. So I'm going to manually simulate this by running the same actual tool, but in a different scenario. So we're going to run it in the UAT mode. So it's identified that I want to do the actual end user request for Spotify. The version number, we've taken that from the actual application manager database. Because the, what we've seen with customers is that they have a different way of versioning their applications. They might call this, this the 1.0 is the first Spotify release that they put out. And that is, the, I mean, important, not the 0 0.81. It's the first request that we're actually pushing out. So doing the test is very simple. You would normally go in, see the application that has been installed. So in this case, yeah, it seems to be there. We're going to report all good. 
and press OK. And type it in and basically send that and log off. So normally I'm going to try to avoid to do that because I'm running on a terminal service session so it's going to log me off and then we'll be back in demo mode again. But it seems like my uh, terminal service session has kind of, but we can talk, we'll wait, meanwhile we'll wait for that mm -hmm. to come back. We'll go back to the slides a little bit. Yeah, so now, now we actually have the application already deployed out to the end. We have it tested and we have it deployed out. So Andrea is going to show a little bit of that in, yep. a, in a couple of minutes. But what we have then afterwards is you saw Brad the other day talking about control and, and also the governance part. So we really w walked, wanted to actually develop something where we can give the system center administrator um, something where he doesn't have to sit and spend all his time on creating reports. It's a very tedious thing, and you all know how, how the reporting mechanism is not always something that the business is coming and saying, now we have a software audit, and we want to, you to actually take out what kind of software we're using, how much we're using, and also how often we're using it. We talked to a lot of people about, like, how would you actually like to have this, these kind of reports? Would you like to, them to be green or red? And what, that, what they really said is, make something which is very simple, make something where you actually do all the information, where you can collect all the information for us and that you can present it in a very nice way that we can take directly to the procurement department, that we can take to the software asset management team in the organization, and where it's just following all the licensing rules and everything else. So we actually have a, a large team sitting and dealing with everything from software recognition. That means that they're actually sitting and finding out whether some software requires a license or if, whether it doesn't require a license. They also actually take all the company's license data and enter it in. So you can see the agreement, like when, when the agreement is uh, going to expire, you know you can get notifications like a month before. So you can actually go to that uh, license company and you can go and renegotiate the deal before they just send you the bill for the maintenance. We decided actually to build this up on, on the Azure platform because what, what companies really didn't want was to have a lot of people who had to sit and work in tools and do these kind of things. What they wanted to have the economy of scale from a lot of customers who could get, use the same information from everyone else. And then they wanted to be able to just log on and see this data and then actually collect all this data. So we actually attached uh, the the uh, configuration manager up to the Azure platform using the, uh, the SQL uh, part. So how does it look like? Well, it looks something like this. Very, very simple. With uh, very, very simple speedometers telling whether you are compliant or whether you're not compliant. So and we're going to do a, a little bit of demo. We think yeah, we're first going to go a little I'm bit I'm back to uh, if Andreas is successful with his yeah, connection. I'm not very successful at all. Uh, the network seems to have kicked me out, and I think I managed to actually re, re, uh, shut down my terminal service session as well. So, but hopefully there we have sure. some sort of internet connectivity. So, so this is actually CSAM. We basically a web SQL reporting in Azure. You log on with your individual credentials, and you have all of the reporting taken them from configuration manager up into the cloud. So. This is live data that we can look, so we can basically find the, the five top latest blacklisted software from the view. We can go in and drill down to see the actual different individual reports. So if you go and look at the office utilization, that will just load that report. So we basically we can see, yeah, all these are all the components within an office and how many users have used it within the last three months used within the last three months, six months, and within the 12 months. So all of the reports are basically at your fingertips. So you have the ability to very simply actually go in and look of your compliance status. Yeah, and some, something which is, is really cool about this is that this is actual data which is synchronized from the on-premise 
configuration manager. So this doesn't mean that you have to have like all the clients connected up to uh, to um, to Azure. So all these worries that we are seeing people having about uh, security, well, this is this is not the PCs reporting it. This is coming from the configuration manager database. So that, that actually takes away a lot of that concern, which we have seen customers mentioning about, you know, can we do the cloud? Can we d deliver data out? We're not taking any data from the PCs here. All right, so if we switch back to the slides a little bit, I'm going to work in the background to get the demo back online again. OK, good. Because, um, yeah, to sum up the, um, the uh, demos that we have been doing here, we're having a little bit of trouble with them, of course. Uh, but what, what we were showing you uh, during here was actually how we take from the application owner, we took the information from him, and we actually took his request and automatically put it into to our order database. We then authorized that this software is something that we can accept, that it will go into uh, the, so the organization. We also then managed to actually schedule a session with him where he is documenting all his requirements and he is actually handing that in to us in a very, very simple manner using video. We then actually took that information and packaged the package, did an automatic testing up towards uh, SCCM. We then actually also created the, all the automation workflow controlling the virtual machines and actually delivered uh, that out to a machine where the end user could then go out and test it. As soon as we have tested it and he has said okay for it, we moved it into production and then we ended up with actually measuring, uh, measuring all the data using uh, our CloudSAM solution built on Azure. Almost there. So basically, hopefully I can come back in here again. Yes. So basically what we've done now, so we're back on the, the virtual machine. And if we take our application and basically then look at the test, so we're going to do a refresh of the application here. We can see that the end user actually have gone in and under the test results, we should, we should be able to see that oh, the test has not been performed. I'm going to trust my luck here and say, OK. Seems like we have to fill in. Okay. So basically now, I do a refresh, we can see that this actual test result that the guy did has now been actually been accepted. So we can see that the tool went in, realized that this was the actual test that was going to be performed, and has approved it. So this application is good, and we're going to go ahead and actually submit this as the final version. And what then happens is that we have the ability to associate this application with both an Active Directory group or many Active Directory groups. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new group for it. It's going to be the install type. So selecting a security group down here. And probably going to see if we can find something with Spotify. Yeah, there's the security group that we created earlier. Of course, the security group is something that you would go in an accelerator and actually request access for new Active Directory group. But in order to save some time here, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to save that entry. And then the last piece is basically we're going to publish this back into the self-service portal accelerator. So if we switch back, the process is now done. We have an actual application. We have it in Configuration Manager. We have it linked to the actual Active Directory group. So if we go in and go under administration, I am the wrong user. So close that. I'll close them all. Go in as administrator again. And we go to the actual access. We will be able to filter out and search for the product types that we have, which is basically software. So if I can find it, my 
Well, I, what I want, one thing that I want to show is basically the, the product type that we filled in, which was a new software piece. Or did I lose network connectivity again? I guess so. But basically, what we wanted to show is that the application is now back into Accelerator, and there the administrators and the business people have the ability to then give out this using service templates to publish this application out to all of the end user. So not only John Doe will get Spotify, but his other colleagues have the ability to see that Spotify is available as an actual application. So they can go in and say, hey, this looks pretty good, and actually directly, without going through this lengthy process, get the application installed. So yeah. I think the demo got us. Yeah, the demo Definitely not network's been today. running very, very, very well the rest yeah. of the weeks. But uh, of course, when we want to show it, that's when it's breaking down. So it might come okay. back, but let's switch back to the summary. Yeah, so summarizing it up, what we end up here is with actually some software where we also have the self-service portal and where the user can go in and, and actually request that uh, software directly from there, get it approved by his manager. It's available for other end users as well. So it's not only for the guy who actually requested it. You can also use it actually for the uh, service desk unit where you can actually request on behalf of someone else. What we see very often is that someone is actually just asking to, you know, can I have this software? Or a manager is asking, uh, I need this software, and then getting someone else to actually request it on your behalf. This is a very, very uh, common scenario for, uh, for, for IT, com for, uh, IT admi uh, administration and, and for the service desk. Yeah. Yep. So basically, I mean, we think we've done pretty well with the solutions and the actual things that we have. But of course, we're looking to get a lot better. So any feedback that you guys can give us in the either in the evaluation forms or directly after the session will be most really like to hear your story of how we can help or actually get some of the processes that you're struggling with to see if we can try to actually automate them as well. Good. Uh, to contact us, you can also get the deck afterwards where you're very, very welcome to come with all your comments, like Andreas just said. And besides that, please fill out your evaluation forms after the seminar here. It's very important that you do that. Um, and besides that, I hope that you will all have a fantastic party tonight. Look forward to meet as many as possible of you and, and talk about our solutions. So thank you very much. Thank you.